One of my favorite aesthetics in filmmaking and video editing is kind of the old-fashioned grain Super 8 sort of look that uh, makes your footage look as though it's got a lot of grain, a lot of artifacts in it. So I've always appreciated this in things like horror movies when they're able to create interesting overlays that look sort of creepy. Or I use this sometimes for videos that I'm editing for wedding clients that I've had because it kind of makes a cute little old-fashioned sort of homemade movie kind of a thing. And so today I'm going to be doing a tutorial in After Effects about how to create this sort of effect. And so what I'm going to do is just walk you through the process of creating things from a beginner's perspective on After Effects because I know After Effects can be a bit daunting. But if you're interested in all of this, I'll stop talking, we'll get to the tutorial, and hopefully I can get this done before Skip the Dishes gets here. So let's get to it. All right, so here we are in After Effects, and so we're going to go ahead and create a new composition, and I'm just going to call this Tutorial. And we're just going to do one alteration, which is going to be to have a frame rate of 18, and this is going to add some jitter to our footage at the end of it. And so it's just gonna add a little bit more of that authentic old fashioned sort of look. We're working with a width of 1920 by 1080 and we're doing just 10 seconds because we can loop this. So let's go ahead and create this. And the very first thing that we wanna do is go ahead and create a new solid. So I'm gonna right click, go into new solid and we're gonna call this lines. And then with this, I'm just going to pick a black color and hit okay. And the very first thing I wanna do with this is go up into effect and we're gonna add uh, noise and grain and fractal noise and we're going to be in this menu now. So for our fractal type We're going to change this and we're going to go with something that's called dynamic We're going to modify a couple of our settings here. So I'm going to give you a couple numbers contrast will be 400 and That'll give us this look and then we're going to go to brightness. We're going to go with negative 150 So that will kind of give us a few little specs to work with and we're going to transform these into scratches now so what I'm going to go ahead and do is going to transform, uh, deselect uniform scaling, and then I'm going to change my scale width to 1, and then I'm going to change my scale height to, let's go 20,000 or something like that. That should be appropriate right now. All right, and so we have our basic outline here, and then we need to animate this, so we're going to have to go into evolution and change the settings a little bit. So. I'm going to hover my mouse over the little stopwatch here, hold down Alt and click it. And it'll open up our little expression menu here. So again, just hit Alt and then click on the stopwatch. That should open up your expression. And then I'm going to delete what's there, go time, asterisk, and we're gonna go with 400 for now. And then we'll just click off of that. And what this does is it just animates us a few little lines and that should work out just fine. If you want it to go slower, we can double click back into this and slow it down a little bit. So maybe you want to go something a little slower, like 300, and that will change the aesthetic like this. I actually like that a little bit more, so I'm going to stick with it. Then what we're going to do is we're going to hit Control D. We're going to select lines and hit Control D. I'm going to re rename this new creation Fractal, uh, Fragments, rather. Fragments. And this is going to be much the same as the other one. We're not going to change too many things, but what we are going to do is we're going to go back into transform and we're going to check back on uniform scaling. And so it's going to give us these little fragments back, which is just fine. And we might want to mess around with our contrast a little bit more just so there's not as many of these or me. Uh, or maybe alter our brightness or whatever. So you can mess around those to suit your own aesthetic needs. And then I'm also gonna drop the opacity of these. I'm gonna drop the opacity quite low to 29 or so. And with the lines, I'll do the same thing. I'll click on it, go to my opacity, and I'm just gonna drop those down a little bit. Now you'll notice uh, right now that even though these are animated, they're not showing up. So you're going to have to go into the mode and you're going to have to select add as opposed to normal. So we're gonna to go to add for both of these, and this will stack up our little effects. So at this point we have something that's, you know, we're getting we're getting there. We've added a couple little things, but it's not quite not quite everything that we want to add to it. So the next thing I want to do is add an adjustment layer. So I'm gonna go ahead and say new adjustment layer. And with our adjustment layer, this is going to be a shift with the vignette. So what I'm going to do is select this, and then I'm going to go into effect, stylize, and then we're just gonna select CC vignette. And the vignette is going to be um, hard to see with the black background that we're working with. So what I'm going to do is just add a new solid. So we're going to go new solid here. And this one I'm just going to call placeholder because it's going to be holding the place for the video or for our little clip that we want to put in at the end. So I'm going to hit OK. And we're just going to drop our placeholder here. I should have shifted that to gray, but 
this is a good little thing to know anyways you just click on uh, a solid if you want to change the color you can go into the layer solid settings and then you can just click on here if you need to make a modification i'm going to go with something that's a little bit lighter of a gray and okay so now it's kind of starting to look slightly older it's starting to have that more aged appearance but we're going to go back to our adjustment layer now and we are going to uh, change our vignette so it's a little bit more uh, noticeable so we're going to kind of push those sides in a little bit more and that's going to give us a little bit more of an oldie old-fashioned sort of look and so now again it's just bringing what's in the center of the scene a little bit more into focus and then we're going to make one more little adjustment layer and uh, this is going to have two effects on it so i'm going to rename this guy vignette just so i can differentiate them vignette there we go and we're going to call this one uh color change so those are going to be our two little things that we're going to modify so the color change we're going to go in effect and we're going to go into color correction and in, there's a lot of different things we could do here to manage our color but uh, I think what I'm going to do is go with a color balance and what we're going to do is just kind of shift our color around. I want something a little bit warmer for mine personally but you can kind of shift these around to get uh, a sort of feel that you would want. Maybe you want to add some magentas or maybe you want it a little bit orangier looking. I like to play around with these a little bit just so that I can kind of I'll match them to the clip that I'm trying to create this for, so it kind of just depends on your original uh, color that you're trying to apply it to, but I think I'll just leave it like that for now, just keep it nice and simple. So I kind of like the orangeness to it, and that's looking pretty good right now. I like that. So this is a little too simple right now, though, because if you have to imagine old-fashioned stuff, you'd probably imagine little uh, fragments of hair or what have you over top of it. So we're going to add just a couple more things, and that will complete our composition. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and create a new and we're going to go with shape layer this time. And what we're going to do is we're going to click on this, select the pen tool, and then we're going to just add a little L shape up here, just like that. And that's going to be our shape essentially. Now I have stroke turned on right now and I have fill turned on right now, but I want to get rid of the fill. So what I'm going to do is hover my mouse over this, hold down alt and just click on it a couple times until it shows that there's nothing left. So this little line indicates that there's no fill and my stroke is way too high right now so I'm just going to guide that down to a lower number. And I don't like the color of it so I'm going to double click on stroke and change it to something that's a little bit brighter so you can see it. And just change it so that it's around maybe about there, 16 pixels, that seems to be doing the trick. And so now we don't want just this to be um, a fragment in our clip. It's just going to hover there right now if I leave it as it is, and that looks weird and unnatural. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the arrow head here. Just close this guy up for a second. And then I'm going to apply the effect to it that is blur. So we're going to choose a camera lens blur. And then it's kind of blurry there. I'd like to increase it a little bit more. So maybe we'll increase our blur radius to be about there. And then we're also going to want to modify our opacity. So what I'm going to do is, uh, just with our shape layer here, I'm going to open this up. A simple way to do this actually, you get to know the hotkeys, just hit T and your opacity will pop up and maybe we'll change that so it's a little bit, there we go. Now this is fine, but again, it's just sitting there. What I want to do is just have this rapidly kind of flick on and off. And so what I'm going to do is go to 10 frames and then I'm going to change my opacity down to about zero. And then I'm going to hit my little keyframe here, my little stopwatch. So that's going to be zero. I'm going to jump ahead maybe one frame or whatever. And then I'm going to jump back up to that 67 that I had before. So it'll just blip in and out really quick. So I'm going to go zero, 67, and then back to zero. And there you go. So this is going to be just a little blip. We can watch that. It'll just be a little quick flick on and off. And that's going to repeat because it's a 10 second loop. So uh, it's just good to add these little fragments in here. And what I might do is go ahead a little bit further, maybe down the line, and I might uh, keyframe in another one. I might go six, seven, just put that in and then jump ahead a little bit. And you just have to be careful not to delete any of your keyframes. So uh, if I leave, a, leave it here, I have to be cautious not to have it slowly fade back into existence. Uh, so what I want to do is drag my little zero marker to before this and then make sure that I include one afterwards. So as you can see, it'll be 
uh, my values for the opacity for this particular fragment is going to be 0, and then 67, and then 0. So again, we'll just have a couple little blips of it in there. And then again, it'll show up once it drags over these keyframes. So there it is again. And if we wanted to change the location of it, maybe I wanted the initial one up here and the other one down in the right-hand corner, what I can just do is create keyframes for position as well. So I select my shape layer, hit P, my position comes up, and so maybe I was happy with the original position being here, so I'll create a keyframe there. And then later on, I'll put it over uh, down on the lower end of things. So maybe I'll drag it to here, and then I'll drag it over and drop it down. So now it'll be in two different locations. It'll just kind of blip in and out. And since the opacity is set to zero during this particular time frame, you're not going to see it traveling across the screen. You'll see a blip there. And then when it comes on again, you'll see a blip once more. So it's just in two different locations. I find that's a little bit better. And you can create a few fragments like this. I'm not going to go through the trouble in the tutorial of creating a whole bunch of these, but it'll look a lot more authentic if you make some small ones, some larger ones, maybe a couple different shapes. Maybe you want to include a couple bigger ones and a couple just little small ones, but it depends on how much time you really want to spend on this. So we have our placeholder right here. And I want to replace that with footage now. So how do I go about doing that? Well, we go back into our project menu. We have our little clip. It's just an MOV file. So I'm just going to drag this and I'm going to drop it in at the bottom here. Now, we're not going to see it because I have my placeholder in the way. And so what I would need to do is just eliminate that. So now we're going to be able to see how all of this stacks up over the footage. So my placeholder was just that simple little gray background. I'm just going to hit backspace on it and it's gone now. And it will be replaced by a video of my dad just playing the guitar. So I'm just going to drop the audio on this so we can just watch uh, what this looks like and then make some alterations based on what we actually want to accomplish with it. For one thing, it's not really looking grainy enough. So we're going to have to add one more little thing to this to make it complete. And that's to make it just grainier. And we might want to adjust the color a little bit so it looks older. But for now, I'm just going to go ahead and say new. And we're going to do the same thing. We're just going to add another adjustment layer. So this will be our third adjustment layer. And what we're going to do is we're going to go up into effect, add noise, and uh, we're just going to go down and just select the basic noise function. And I'm going to turn this up, maybe do 100. Oop, that's not, that's way too much. <laughs> so we're going to go 20, let's go with 25% for now. That should be fine. So you can see now it's adding actual grain over the footage and our little lines and stuff in there and all of our little fragments are kind of adding this look to it. And that's looking really nice. The only thing I'm not really seeing enough of is the vignette right now. So again, we'll have to make our adjustments based on what we're seeing. So we're gonna go back to that uh, adjustment layer that had the vignette, and we're just gonna turn it up a little bit more. There we go, I'm liking that a lot more now. So we went back to the beginning of the clip now, you can really see now it's starting to look older. So just darkness in the corners, focus on the subject in the middle. I think that looks great. So um, that's about where we would arrive at the end. And what we could do right now is export this clip, this 10 second clip. But what I really want to show people how to do is create an overlay. So how do I create something here that I could overlay on footage in say Premiere Pro? Well, maybe what I would want to do is just get rid of this clip because you know I want to actually apply this to multiple things. So I'm going to go ahead and create my placeholder again. I'm going to go ahead and say solid. Uh, we'll have our lightish dark gray solid and just throw that on there. So uh, the placeholder will still come in handy later on. So what we have now is basically this really grainy looking sort of thing with a couple artifacts on it. I'm going to overlay this and use this as an overlay, but I need to export this. And I'm going to actually export it with this gray solid attached to it. And uh, we're going to export this as an MP4 file. You can export it as an AVI file, which allows you to make your file transparent to a certain point but i think most people are familiar with working with mp4s so rather than going through the avi sort of system and maintaining our transparency i think i'll just show it the most simple way possible so everybody gets the most utility out of it so what we're going to do is we're going to go back to our project here and now we can export our tutorial so there's a couple different ways you could go about doing this you can go into file export and then you can add it to your render queue inside After Effects. But what I actually prefer to do is use the Media Encoder queue. And this is available to anybody who's paying the monthly subscription fee for Premium Pro and After Effects and all that jazz. So if you have After Effects and you pay for that, in all likelihood you have access to the Adobe Media Encoder queue. And the reason this is valuable to people, particularly my stock 
people. Uh, the reason this is valuable is you can change the bit rate, you can manage all of your settings, all of the export settings, your codec, all of that stuff. And so we're gonna do this very simply, but what I'm gonna do is just quickly open uh, Adobe Media Encoder queue. All right, so now we've exported it and our file has appeared in the Adobe Media Encoder. And so what we can do here, this is useful part of this, is we can create our own presets. And this works a lot like Premiere Pro if you've used it. So if we wanted to create a new preset, we could hit the plus icon here and we could create an encoding preset. And we're gonna go ahead and do that. I have a couple that I use and I'm just gonna select H264. It's a regular uh, basic one that we could go with for our codec. And then uh, we'll select that and then uh, for here, I'm just going to select it so that it would work really well with, let's say, YouTube. So we'll just select the YouTube 1080p sort of a thing, and we'll just name this uh, Grain. And that will allow us to, um, yeah, just export it as we would like it. So we're going to just hit OK. And uh, now that we have that, we're going to go up to our uh, preset, click on this, and it's going to take a little bit of time again <laughs> to connect to this, but it's going to allow us to essentially select our preset apply it to the file that we've just created and then export it. And then basically from there, it's a simple matter of putting it on top of a file inside Premiere Pro and then changing the opacity of this particular MP4 file. And then of course you just have to select the file, hit the little uh, render button and it will go through the process of rendering it. So that's really all there is to it for the After Effects tutorial. It is a fairly simple process. It's a good little first project to get started with. You can get used to using things like fractal noise. You can use get used to doing things like layering and seeing how compositions work. And it's also just useful to know how to export a video from After Effects so that you can reuse it in your own files just to kind of save time in the future. I hope it was useful to you. I hope you found the tutorial uh, followable. So, uh, that's all I really have for you for this week. So have a good one and we'll catch you next time.